Today, on the Azimut 95 RPH. I try and drive, but don't know where to put my hands. Have a bit of trouble finding the cabins, get big-headed and feel like I'm a movie star. Then come down to the ground with a bump to something that's more in line for me. And if you want to see how it finishes up, well, just keep watching. Azimut is one of the Azimut Benetti group brands, along with Atlantic, Mejolano, Flying Bridge and Grande, and offers the widest range of yachts from 34 to 120 feet. We're at the Cannes Yachting Festival and we're about to board the Azimut 95 RPH. What, you aren't interested in boats? Just wait, because later on we do a tour of the inside that you may get some home furnishing pointers on then. We're on the Côte d'Azur, where you quite often get to see big yachts like this one. Shall we do a tour? Well, you can drive the boat from here, the flying bridge or the raised pilot house. Guardate che plancia. Look at the bridge. I'll need a bit of time to figure out where to put my hands. The engines start like this, though. It's quite special starting up 4,400 horsepower. I think the external lines of the Azimut 95 RPH are really cool, very elegant and modern, typically Italian. Stefano Rihini designed it. In fact, he practically created the Azimut style. This helm is called the Raised Pilot House because it's higher than the main bridge, so the rooms are more inhabitable. We're moving. The engines are going at the minimum, 600 revs a minute and 6 knots. There's total silence and it doesn't even feel as if we're moving, let alone on a motorboat. Even though this is an enormous mass, I can feel the propellers pushing the boat out of the water. The bow doesn't go under, the hull comes away easily from the waves and at the stern. The wake shows that the boat is well balanced dynamically because it's not bringing much water up. It's wonderful to know that it's so big, but it moves in such a brilliant way, even accelerating. At 1,600 revs, we're touching 14.2 knots. Here, we're even looking at tenths of knots. On a boat this big, every little detail is of valued importance. Like the speed effect, synced engines are important because the push needs to be perfectly balanced and the load on each needs to be distributed equally which then goes on to give better mileage. Even though it's a big boat, practically a ship, it has a range of flaps, intruders to be precise, which are there to regulate the boat's balance. But the extraordinary thing is that I didn't have to regulate them to get the plane. I left them completely raised because they didn't give any resistance and the boat went progressively forward anyway. There are lots of instruments that you need to keep your eye on, but it's a lot of fun being in command of something this long. Quite extraordinary. The 2,200 horsepower 16-cylinder MTU engines can keep up a continual 2,100 revs and speed correlates to 20 knots. But that's not all. Now, so let's put our foot down. Apparently nothing is happening. Everything is nice and cosy, so quiet, but the dial on the speedometer is rising.
25 almost. Imagine, it's almost 29 meters long, 110 tons, and we're going more than 25 knots. Incredible. This hull has been brought to you by Azimut engineer Pia Luigi Alcionio. It is stuck to the route in an incredible way because along the keel axis there's a skeg, which is a fin that goes lengthwise like a fish. The reservoir on this boat can hold 12,000 litres of petrol, a bit like filling up 200 cars. It must be pretty boring too. It'd take up a lot of time and a lot of money. Of course, I'm enjoying being the pilot on the Azimut 95 RPH. Wouldn't you like to drive it? Sorry, you'd rather be the owner? Right, well, I'll show you the cabin. The owner's cabin is at the bow and fills 34 meters squared. On a yacht like this, that's a record space. If I owned the boat, I'd be pretty happy here. There's a dressing room with two full-height wardrobes. There's a central chest of drawers and cupboards to the side. They've even lowered the washboard so you can see the sea. The bathroom goes along the whole beam so it's very long, and fittings are teak and marbled rounded with mahogany pieces. The shower door is teak too. Then, if I was the owner, I'd toddle off to the stern to fully appreciate the sun and wind while sailing. The boat is wonderful from here too. If I owned the boat, I'd be going to the stern for a swim and the sun and the sea. The bridge is a beach area filled with mobile bar, beach umbrella, lounger, little shower, and again, if I was the owner, I'd be off into the flying bridge to enjoy the whirlpool. The living area has the same possibilities as the owner's cabin which means there's a strong connection with the outside. Lowering the washboard again to make wider and higher windows. It's a very popular design. The salon hosts 10 and the eating area is for eight. A 55 inch TV screen comes down from the ceiling. Interiors are by Salvi Anciati and made by the excellent Tuscan artists. The kitchen area is a work of art. Even the centre table is an object of rare beauty, with details in gold leaf, as is the ceiling above the table. And when you look at the details, you see how precisely it's been put together. In truth, I'd like to be the chef on the Azimut 95 RPH. In the kitchen, appliances, materials and accessories are top quality. Even the technology is top-notch here. Or I could be the barman. That way I could prepare cocktails here on the flying bridge and just drink in the panorama. You know what I think? It would be incredibly lucky to be a guest on this boat. There are four cabins, all noble, all the same, all en suite. The headboards are leather, a nice contrast to the shiny mahogany, the silk and the teak. The eggshell varnish on the side tables is irresistible. You just want to touch them. There are three cabins for the crew and two bathrooms in an area around the bow with independent access from the kitchen. The garage crosses with a pivotal sea platform and there are four for a four meter plus tender. And there's room for a four meter plus tender. Well, I've had dreams of being owner, guest barman and chef. But really, I want to be the engineer and look after the power of these 4,400 horses. Every cylinder is as powerful as a car's 2,230 cubic centimetres. There are 16 of them, eight per bank, for a total of 35,680 cubic centimetres. You know what I think? 
I'd do anything and all of the above if it meant I could stay on board this Azimut 95 RPH.